So the general function of epithelial tissue is a barrier between the outside and inside of the body. A clear example of this is the skin. Um, a lot of the skin, the outside layer of the skin is made of epithelial tissue. There are other examples in the body though where we're separating inside and outside that we'll see. Um, for example, the lining of the digestive tract um, is called the lumen, is the hole inside the body and epithelial tissue separates um, the stuff. So this would be food in the lumen from the inside of the body. That's going to be epithelial tissue. So it shouldn't be surprising that a big function of epithelial tissue is protection, um, largely from outside of the body. And that can mean a couple different things, um, but also can secrete for various purposes. Um, similar is excrete. So excrete would be going out of the body. Secretion would be something that is um, staying in the body like a, a gland. Absorption, so the other direction going kind of in, for example, absorbing food. Um, filtration, which is somewhat related to protection, right? Allowing some things in the body um, and some other specialized functions. Their structure is going to relate to this function. So whether it's going to be a protective or a more about secretion or transport, um, it's gonna depend on the structure of the epithelial tissue, structure function. So there's different cell shapes that we're gonna see. So there are, and I have this, I wanna do this like this, okay. There are very short cells that are kind of squat. These are called squamous. There are a little bit wider cells that are more like cubes. These are cuboidal. And then there are columnar. So these are column-like cells, columnar. These are the three cell shapes. Then for each one of these, you could have either layers or a single layer. So each of these can be either one layer or multiple layers. One layer is called simple. Make some sense, maybe. Multiple layers is called stratified. Like stratifications, maybe know that word. Makes, try to make sense of the words. So let's see how many different then combinations do you see here? At least six, right? Um, there are six categories here, and there are also two others. Um, I'm going to show one right now. So I will show you seven classifications of epithelial tissue. Wait for it right now. Okay. So here are those categories. Squamous um, cells, thin cells can either be simple or stratified. So I'm actually going to erase this and let's write down now the types these types. So there is simple squamous epithelium. And we're, we're trying to get to seven. There's one. Then there's stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified squamous epithelium is going to be more protective. Squamous, because there's more layers there. Then we're going to have simple cuboidal epithelium, stratified cuboidal, a little more rare, but it does exist. Simple columnar, gonna be in our intestines, and then stratified columnar. like stratified cuboidal, a little more rare. It's gonna be in glands. Then the last one here is pseudo-stratified. You've seen this. It looks stratified, 
but it's not. Pseudostratified columnar because they are columnar shaped. in the trachea and other respiratory passageways. There's one more type called transitional that is located in the bladder. It's stretchy, looks a lot like this. Um, we may see that a bit later. So these are the seven types that we're going to talk about. Um, and I want you to remember these categories and make sense of the names, okay? All right, learning check two, name these. Name the class, three different classes here, and three different cell types here. Easy, right? Okay, other general features of epithelia um, are also important. So these are epithelial cells. This here is a single layer. So you can kind of see a cell here, a plasma membrane surrounding it. These are cells, so they have a nucleus. Here is a single nucleus, as you know, with the dye, the H and E dye that we use, nucleus. It stains a deep purple. Um, and then remember, epithelial cells always are facing on the surface of a body, on a body's surface, outside of the body. So that means they have sides to them, right? There's a this side and there's a this side. The apical surface is always going to border the open space. So whether that's the um, air, like in the context of your skin, or the lumen. So this here is our apical surface. The basal surface is on the other side. So the bottom, the bottom of the entire layer of epithelial tissue. In this case, it's only one layer. So that's the bottom of one layer of cells. This Basal surface is also often next to connective tissues. These two together, so there's this like basal surface with the connective tissue. We will see this. This is going to be called the basement membrane. So the basement, the bottom. It's made up of the bottom layer of connective tissue, the bottom layer of epithelial tissue, and the connective tissue that underlies it. So we'll see this again. Okay. Then we've got to have a way to connect cells next to each other. So I want to come back to types of junctions that link two different epithelial cells. Um, and then we've talked about the cell shapes already. So um, that's what I want here for general features. We're good. So this, see this, Let's see this in context of a couple, couple examples. Um, again, we're gonna do a lot more examples in the next video. Stratified squamous epithelium, that's one type, right? So this is actually found in the esophagus, an area that needs to be protected from things that you, when you're too rough when you eat. I'm actually gonna bring in my other picture also, and I'm gonna label things on both at the same time. This is simple columnar epithelium. This is found in the intestine. So these are two pretty different types. We've got a single layer of columnar cells. We've got multiple layers of short squamous cells, but they've got some same general features. So we've got on both cases, and what do you think this is? Apical surface, not just necessarily the top, but it's the top, you know, even if it's oriented the other way, it's the side that connects to the lumen of the esophagus or in this case, the lumen of the intestines. That means we have a basal surface down here, actually. It's a little bit better right there at the bottom. That is our basal surface. Why did I do it just above where I first had it? Right here, here you can actually see the basement membrane, because that's connective tissue. I won't, I'm not going to ask you to distinguish between the basal surface is a side. It's the bottom side. The basal surface um, is right next to, it's actually made up of it, the basement membrane is part of that basal surface. I'm not going to ask you to distinguish between them. The basal surface is like the bottom side. The apical surface is the top side. Basement membrane is a physical thing that I'll talk more about when we get to connective tissues because that's, then we'll see it, what that connective tissue is. 
Okay, so down here is connective tissue. There are some cell membranes, right? I'm sorry, there are some cells down here. You can see the nuclei in this connective tissue because, right, there's cells there too. This down here, connective tissue. Um, then we've got some specialized structures on this one here. So on the apical surface of the intestines, we've got this funky little pink layer. This is called the brush border. It's like a, a border that's been brushed on. It's made up of microvilli. The microvilli are the individual things. Brush border is what it's called overall. Um, microvilli are actually cytoskeletal extensions, um, extensions of the plasma membrane that are composed of um, microfilaments, thin, thin strands. They increase the surface area for absorption. So these cells are going to absorb, which probably shouldn't be too surprising since we're talking about the intestine. That's their job. Okay, so two examples labeling those things for epithelial tissue. Here's one more example I want to show here with, with the basics. Um, you could label apical basal surface. Um, you could, this is pseudostratified columnar epithelium as an example. And then what I wanted to show here are two more things, cilia, these are also cytoskeletal extensions. Um, in this case, they are a little bit bigger. Uh, we also are zoomed in pretty darn far here. They look a little different though. You'll see the difference in lab, hopefully try to. They actually are mobile, so they can move. Um, they get debris and stuff out of your respiratory passageways and you can cough it or cough it up. Um, the other thing here are goblet cells. So that's this. I'll label this a goblet cell is this and also this right here. So these are found within epithelial layers in certain places. So they're going to be found in pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Also, they will be found in simple columnar. So in the intestines. Goblet cells are also called, because they are mu um, mucus cells. They are a type of mucus cell, produce mucus. Here are secretory vesicles that are um, produced inside the organelles of the cell that contain mucin mucus. And their job is to secrete out mucus, which is beneficial both for your, your respiratory passageways, even though maybe you don't appreciate that all the time, um, as well as your intestines to lubricate and, and your, your feces at that point. Um, and what, yeah. So goblet cells are another thing that you will see. All of these things, goblet cells, microvilli, cilia, those three kind of variants differ in different types of epithelial tissue. Whereas I want you to be able to label apical and basal surface, um, basement membrane, nucleus in, in any epithelial type. Okay, then I also talked to you about, I mentioned the junctions, right? That's been another common thing that we need to talk about for epithelial tissues. Unlike connective, epithelial tissues, cells are very close together. So we need a way to have them stay together. There are three different types and um, I'm not gonna talk a lot about any of them, but I want to mention them. So one is, um, do I have, oh, here, there, there it is, tight junctions. Tight junctions, I will mention a couple of times because um, the fact that two adjacent epithelial cells are very tightly interlocked, that is important. It's going to affect how things can move from here to here, so in and out of the body. Um, things can't go through here. So they're gonna create an impermeable or very minimally permeable space space between cells, see, is enclosed. So I will use the word tight junctions um, when I talk about transport across epithelial cells. There's also desmosomes, that's this. Basically it's like Velcro. So it's holding them together a little bit looser, um, kind of like Velcro, a little bit more space there. Hold, hold cells together. You notice you can have both in the same, the same cell, the same cells. Then lastly, you've got gap junctions. You know what gap junctions are, right? 
from cell communication lectures. So they're channels that link two cells um, in terms of what chemicals and even electrical charges are across them. Um, won't talk about these a whole lot in epithelial tissues. You know that they are a thing in general um, and they can be present to junction epithelial cells. So there's the three ways that epithelial cells are junctioned, um, brought and kept together. Um, the fact that they are tight junctions will be particularly important in the future.